Right, another cracking little photo stop. What an absolute winner. Right, Nigel, our illustrious leader, has gone on ahead and he's waiting with his camera with his bike, so let's see if he gets some shots of us going past, I think. Well, check this out. It's actually quite a beautiful bridge, and I think it's what makes it special is the fact it's got this bend at the end of it. I've not seen a bridge like that before. It's like the bridge to the end of the earth. Amazing. I've certainly never done a bridge like that before. Beautiful. Quite windy up here, mind. Is our man? The colour of the sea here is absolutely incredible. It's such a pure blue. I assume to do with mineral content from meltwater, I don't know. Right then, how far have we got to go? About 30 minutes to our next ferry. Okay, I'm on the uh, 17 now to Tiotta, which is uh, T-J-O-T-T-A, if you're following on the map. And it's about another oh, half an hour ride through yet more stunning mountainous scenery. Look at that, absolutely cracking. I'm uh, Billy Nomates again now. Left the rest of the crew back at the bridge. One or two of them may well catch me up. I'm just taking it leisurely though and enjoying the views. Huh, airfield just there. It's called Stocker, S-T-O-K-K-A. Pretty massive runway. Sadness Lufthafen Stocker. Proper control tower, it's the full Monty. I dare say that airfields have to be pretty serious up here because sometimes it might be the only way that people can get up here in any sort of speed. What a cracking place it would be to come and do a flying tour. Might have to put that to the house. Now that is a mountain. Probably don't get the impression of scale on the GoPro but that is properly big looking. So this is Tiotta, and as I've got time in hand, I might just take a photograph here. Why not? Here we go, another little view, sorry about the wind noise. Check this one out. Shabby, yeah? Excellent. Right, onwards. Right. Another photo stop in the bag. Let's go find the ferry. Oh, I'm starting to get warm now. Lovely little beaches down here. Look at this, just deserted as well. Different sorts of trees, I've not seen these before. Right, only uh, 2.6 miles to the uh, ferry now at Tiotta. Let's see if I can find that. Well, this looks like the ferry terminal. And I want the one that goes from Tiotta to Forvik. So, Vega, 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 Forvik 1, Forvik 2. That'll do me. Despite my stops, first of the team here. So it looks like we've got about an hour to wait for this ferry. Um, and there's a bit of debate about uh, which one to get as well. Apparently there's two ferries, one that uh, is 10 minutes earlier than the other one, but the 10 minutes earlier one stops a lot and you end up getting to wherever we're going a lot later. So we've got to make sure I get the right ferry. But uh, just thought I'd come and have a little look at the marina here. Look at this. Yeah, 
another absolutely beautiful spot. The water here absolutely crystal clear. Beautiful. Right, a bit of waiting then. Okay, time has come to board ferry number two for the day. Looks much the same sort of setup as ferry number one, albeit a bit busier. Wonder how he's going to want to deploy us. Fair enough, ski. We're on. Right, the end of another ferry crossing. That was a 45 minute one. And uh, now it's going to be quite interesting because we're just on a little bit of land that just has one short road for 10 miles that goes to the next ferry crossing. So the chances are everybody on this ferry is going on that same route. So, uh, and the next ferry doesn't go for a little while. So I've got plenty of spare time if needed. Oh, into the blue yonder. Lovely. Let's wait over here for the rest of our crew. Amazing little church, they're so well kept here. Okay, so just uh, 10 miles as I say on this uh, little island and the next ferry is at 12.30 which is uh, three quarters of an hour. So 10 miles and take us about 15 minutes I guess. We should be there, just perfect time to get tickets and that sorted. All good. So in case you're wondering about costs for these ferries, the uh, that last ferry was uh, 100 Krohn. Norwegian Krohn or Kroner which is about 10 quid and the one before that was 80 so about 8 quid uh, and they take about 40 45 minutes so that's the sort of cost you're looking at doesn't seem too bad a price to me it seems sort of on a par with what you might pay in the Scottish Western Isles so it's the first thing I've come across here in Norway that's not uh, twice as expensive as anywhere else I think but they are super efficient I mean it's like a bus service they don't hang about at either end they get you on and off and they leave dead on time it's a very good service Here's the whole crew in line astern. Looking good. views, spectacular mountain, lovely weather, lots of bikes, all good. Andelsvag, which is where we catch the next ferry. So that was an amazing 10 mile blast. Didn't take very long, but it was absolutely lovely. Right, another ferry to catch in. Oh yeah, same again, please. <laughs> Bingo. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Right, ticket Ferry number three for the day. Oh, I'd love to ride with the jacket open. All right, where's he want me? Exciting. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a curvature to that one, isn't it? Yeah. They're getting special treatment as coach people. We have got our own deck. Jeez, 
showing off. Yeah, you're not authorised, I'm afraid. Okay, and uh, ferry number three, is it, of the day, is done. Quite exciting on this ramp. Right, we've now got a quick black because it's uh, one of these critical ferries. It's about an hour's ride, but there's no slack in time, so we've got to just uh, crack on and get there. And once again, I suspect most of these cars and bikes are probably all going to the same spot. Oh, this day's just getting better and better. The scenery is, uh, if it can get better. <laughs> just keeps on giving. The road is amazing. I guess the traffic has built up a little bit now, but uh, nowhere near as bad as on that previous road, the E6. Absolutely glorious. What's the temperature doing now? It's feeling warm. 29.5 degrees. Absolutely nuts. Check that out. That's a hot day for the Arctic, or close to the Arctic. If only my drone was working. Look at the sea here, you could be in uh, the West Indies, couldn't you? It's absolutely beautiful. Amazing uh, rock out the sea there, or mountain. It's a bit like the rock of Gibraltar. Maybe not quite so big. But if you had just blocked here and said, where are you in the world? I'm not sure you go with Norway looking at that sea. I think it's a country that much undersells itself. Albeit I have been completely lucky with this glorious weather, which I'm sure isn't the norm. So, 16 miles to go to the uh, Venison Ferry. And uh, I think we might have one more after that. No, in fact that's the last one and then we've got a, uh, a fair old ride after that. So after this next ferry it's a 140 mile leg after that to uh, Nasmos where we're staying for the night. And it will have been an absolutely brilliant day. Having all these ferries, although it means you're on a bit of a schedule to get to them, it does mean you've had a, you know, a good break off the bike regularly, it's been really good. The other thing I guess it's pre prevented me from doing a bit is stopping and taking as many photographs as I would like, because again I would have missed the ferries. But the roads have been absolutely cracking. Superb riding, the likes of which I very rarely get to do. It's certainly up there with the best riding I've ever done, if not the best. It's just such a lovely country, so clean and tidy, green. Nothing to not like about it, there is, isn't it? Except for the uh, cost of everything. That's a bit salty. Now we're into one of these other stretches a bit, you know, open prairie land again. Which reminds me of sections of the Alps you get, which are like this. Or indeed, Little House on the Prairie was a bit like this. <laughs> oh, drinking in the greenness. It's lovely. Right, just 12 miles to go now, till uh, my final ferry of the day. Look at that beautiful glassy water over there. Very inviting on a 30 degree day as it is now. Oh, what I'll give for a quick dip in there. Beautiful reflections. This is uh, amazing drone territory. I'm trying not to think about that though. So quick update, 2.4 miles to the Venison Ferry. Our final ferry of the day before a fairly long leg to a hotel for the night. But that's absolutely fine on roads like these. Why would you want to stop? Just a roller coaster ride this. Wow, look at that. Glassy, that water. Mmm, it's got that lovely smell of the sea about it as well. It's probably the seaweed, but it's, uh, it's beautiful. Right, and here we are at Venison for our final ferry of the day. I wonder if that's it. Is it me or is that a bit larger than the others we've been getting? Yeah, looks quite serious. Excellent.
Right, final ferry of the day. This one looks like quite a big one again. Down the end and under, I guess. Right, final ferry done. And here we are at Holm. Another beautiful little spot. So, I've got uh, about 90 miles to run to the uh, hotel. And I think we're all going to pretty much go our own separate ways on this one. Which is fine because it means I can maybe do a few photo stops. So let's see how this one goes and what it's got to offer. Stick around and stay tuned. This particular road is more like the south of France than the north of Norway. So the town we're staying in this evening is called Namsos. You know absolutely nothing about it other than it's a pretty small place. In fact it's so small I couldn't even get a, a weather forecast for it on the BBC web doodah weather thingy. <laughs> so I don't think there's going to be too much there. As long as there's a bar and some cold beer, I think that's the top priority today because it has been another absolute swelterer. I just checked on the ferry to see what the weather was doing at home and the BBC is saying that today could reach the all-time highest temperature ever recorded, uh, which is about 38 degrees, I think, and they're saying today could, be, could top that at home. So here am I moaning about uh, 29 degrees. But goodness me, 37 is not 38 is not funny, is it, when you're in a country that doesn't have much air conditioning. So happens it's worked out a treat for me in this bike trip though because you imagine how bad the weather could be here and in you know wet poor visibility conditions it would make this a whole different experience. I mean just look at this now. This is unbelievably gorgeous in every respect. Childish, but it has to be done. Wow, what a valley. This is a bit like, uh, you know, if Spain were green, this is what it would look like. <laughs> so I've revised what I said a couple of days ago about um, Norway being great but not necessarily better than Scotland and what's all this fuss about it being Scotland turned up to 11. Well actually I agree with you guys. Bruce was right all along. Scotland's good but this is even better. At the moment I can't think of anywhere I've ridden that is more beautiful than Norway or has better riding roads. It's got everything. Although a bit like those Star Trek episodes when they go to a perfect planet where everything seems perfect but there's some terrible malevolence lurking in the background like they have to give all their children for slaughter or something. Here in Norway that terrible malevolence is the fact that everything's so expensive. Oh how much do I want to jump in that water? another tunnel. Gets nice and cool in these, which is a blessed relief. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, loving that coolness. Yeah. Well, what a top day's riding it's been again. Oh, it's actually wet in here. Oh, it's like being in a fridge. It's lovely. Oh, short-lived. Turning into a bit of a spirited ride, this one. Wow, the view in the mirror behind me. It's just stunning. Oh, I should have stopped there. 
Darn it, that was a cracking view. So we should just go and see what's there. It's a review. I don't know if there is. Oh yeah, there is, surely. Yeah. <laughs> He's brave. Oh. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> right. Just stop down here to see if I can get a glimpse of that view that we saw coming round. <laughs> there goes Richard. Sounds great that bike. I don't think you can quite get the view, but uh, we'll have a wander down, see what we can do. So it turns out it's actually a campsite, but nonetheless, what an amazing place to stay, eh? If you get that view, and then you park your camper here. to like about that. Oh, beautiful. Right, oh, what's right, just about to pull off again. I've noticed it's got this warning triangle up, but it says uh, something like lamp, like lamp failure. So I think I must have a light out. But uh, the daylight running one is fine. Oh yeah, full beam's gone. And what about... So I've got the daylight running ones and I've got all my auxiliary lights but no dip light. How annoying. Luckily I'm not going to be riding at night or not intending to. So I'm just going to have to wait till I get home. That's annoying. Right, crack on. Oh, a bit of air. So I wonder what's happened to that light. I hope it's just a bulb and not, uh, not the lighting unit because they're an expensive thing to replace. Anyway, it's not actually a problem for this uh, journey. Just a minor annoyance. Now, words fail me. I mean, just look at this scenery. It is just stunning. Is there anywhere more beautiful on the planet? Tell me if there is, because I want to go there. Where are we? Look at that! Oh, superb! Right opportunity. Well, there has been so many favourite roads on this trip for various reasons, but this is yet another one. Just because the scenery is so stunning, and it's a lovely road and there's no traffic and it's a beautiful day it's got the perfect sky with really photogenic clouds massive mountains now I've been on the bike this morning or today since 06.30 it's now coming up to 3 o'clock so what's that? five and a half, six hours on the bike so far. And I'm more than happy to do another five and a half, six hours if I had to. Not a hat to though, I've only got another 72 miles to go, so a couple of hours tops, and I should be at Namsos, but uh, riding just doesn't get better than this. Check out the size of these granite faces. Absolutely massive. Well, that 
was very strange. I stopped to uh, have a chat with the uh, team that had just pulled over there and told them all about my warning light and my failed front light. But having turned the bike off and on again, the warning light has now gone out and the lights all seem to be working. How bizarre is that? Well, I'm pleased about that. It saves me a trip to the garage to get it fixed. I'm just wondering now whether it just overheated because it's, uh, it's a 30 degree day today and when I parked up before it was in the sun for a little while and was particularly hot. Although that's a bit of a uh, clutching at straws perhaps. What I'd like to do is find a little uh, oasis with a little bar or cafe in it that sells very cold drinks and get one of those in. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be lucky though. Look at this, out of the tunnel, onto the suspension bridge. <laughs> wow. What a fabulous place to ride. Right, Namsos 101. Oh, well, I have to say, I'm starting to get a bit tired now. It's uh, super warm and there's lovely smooth roads, even though there's lots of turns. I'm starting to find myself being lulled off to sleep. I think that's probably because I had such a bad night's sleep last night, what with uh, the midnight sun and all that. And then getting up really early this morning, I had to be up for 5.30 and uh, I actually woke up at 3 and then basically stayed awake because I didn't go to sleep again, knowing I had to get up. So I had very little sleep last night and it's starting to catch up with me. So what I need is a coffee stop, something with excellent coffee and a nice view be just the ticket. Right, just coming to this little town and uh, definitely going to stop here at this petrol station. There's a Suzuki dealer in the cars. And uh, see if I can get something to wake me up a bit. Some coke or something or a coffee. In fact there's a co-op afterwards. Let's go in there. Oh man, I am hot and tired. Right, let's get something to wake me up. <laughs> right, <coughs> back on the road for the final leg. Just pulled over there at the supermarket, got myself a bun and a bottle of full fat coke just to give me some uh, caffeine to try and lard me up a bit, just giving it 10 minutes to take some effect. Because I was uh, dropping off on the last leg there and that's not good. Just getting those little feelings of having little micro sleeps on some of the bends and that's uh, not what you want to be happening when you're riding a bike for obvious reasons. So 49k to go, or 31 miles, about 40 minutes according to the sat nav. I've just got to uh, keep it together for 40 minutes, get to my hotel, and it's uh, shower and chill time I think for a bit, and maybe the first cold beer of the day. Not necessarily in that order. Okay, so this is uh, Nam Sauce, just filled up with uh, hopper juice. Just got to find the hotel and then uh, hit that bar pronto. Right, apparently we're staying in a bit of an interesting hotel tonight. It's called the Rock Hotel and it's sort of one of these uh, rock music themed places. So goodness knows what that's going to turn out to be. <laughs> so uh, I'll go and uh, find it, park the bike up and I'll uh, speak to you when I've got settled in the room as usual. Okay, so welcome to yet another hotel. This is the Hotel Scandic Rock City, so called, as I mentioned before, because it's a themed hotel. All rooms are themed on a particular rock star. In the case of this one, if I come around so you can see the room, here's the room, all very nice. Here's the, uh, here's the famous rock star that my room is uh, based on. And as you'll know, this is um, Stein Ingbritsen, who's, uh, who's, who's he's great, isn't he? Love, loving his work, good. So there's that, and then the, uh, the desk has a guitar printed on it. So there you go, that's the, that's the rock theme. All right, so the hotel seems okay then, brilliant. Uh, what about tomorrow's routing? I said I'll just give you a quick uh, highlight of that. So here we are, back on the map again then. Today's been quite a heavy old day, bearing in mind. We started at uh, up at 5.30 this morning on the road by six. I'm now here, just had a shower, it's half past five. So it's been a long day on the bike. Tomorrow, even longer. So today we started up here at Moirana, all the way down here. We're in Namsos now, just here. So tomorrow we're coming down this west coast again over another bunch of ferries 
Um, I don't think we're actually going to go through Trondon, but in that area. Uh, all the way down Orkanga, Christiansand, lots more ferries, four ferries in fact, all the way down here uh, on this pink line to Alisand. And we're going to stay there for two nights because it's such a long day, this one. Now when I say long day, uh, it's starting slightly later, we're starting at 7am, so half an hour later than today. But we don't get to the hotel in Alisand until half past seven at night. So. Uh, yeah, a real long trek, another four ferries, but it promises to be amazing because that whole western route uh, apparently is just uh, bridges, tunnels, waterfalls, amazing scenery. So uh, really, really looking forward to that. Today was fantastic, except for maybe the final sort of 20 miles, which was a bit of a bit of a schlep. Uh, but tomorrow should be a great day and the weather looks fair still, so brilliant. All right, so uh, that's it. I'm off to the bar for a much needed beer. I'll uh, see you in the morning.